Welcome to the Higher Ed Jobs Podcast. I'm Andy Hibble, the Chief Operating Officer and one of the co-founders of Higher Ed Jobs. And I'm Kelly Sherwin, the Director of Editorial Strategy. Today, our guest expert is Dr. Christopher Lee. Chris is currently a Managing Director with Storbeck Search. Over his career, Chris has served as the Chief Human Resources Officer for William & Mary, Bates College, and the Virginia Community College System. We also are fortunate to have Chris as a regular contributor with us at Higher Ed Jobs. Thank you, Chris, for joining us today. My pleasure. We are lucky to have Chris back as our expert today. And our question from our listener is, on your CV, how can you obscure, for example, a lack of publications when your teaching record is exceptional or vice versa? Chris, what are your thoughts on this question? So this is, um, this is something that really all of us have in our kind of portfolio. Rare, if ever, does someone come to the table with every check box in every area of the requirements for any position. It's always an assessment against a standard and an assessment against others in how one's application materials are, are viewed. And it's a total package. So assuming we all come with some less than ideal characteristics, the question is, how do you win? You win by having a collection of great experiences, backgrounds, philosophies, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of rule the day. So it's not just the job requirements. It's also how you fit with the organization's mission, vision, strategy, goals, the kind of like a puzzle piece that fits in within the organization's context. So then, assuming you have some areas that are not fully complete and can't check every box, you need to do a couple things to be competitive. You need to talk about the things that you do well. You need to connect the things that you have that are related to the areas that you don't have a full check box in. And then some of it is also being a little persuasive in how you tell your story, right? You have to tell your own version of the truth. We talked in the blog about the fact that I have a philosophical perspective and others do as well, that a resume or CV is not just a list or a documentation of your background and experiences, that it really is designed to be a persuasive document. I mean, it's almost like marketing. You're saying, hey, pick me, <laughs> right? You know, because it's almost like interviews. Uh, if we just hired a resume, you know, we wouldn't need to talk to people. And then if everybody who applies has a lot of stuff, who do you pick? Then you start making decisions around things and you could help yourself by helping people make that decision by being persuasive in how you articulate things. So here, as an example, we, we say that if you don't have a strong publication record, you want to talk up your teaching, you want to talk about your relationship to students, you want to talk about your relationship to the institution and its goals, you want to talk about all those other things. And then you want to say, okay, well, I don't have as many publications, I know how to write and I know how to research. And you could talk about the kind of core competencies that come behind a publication. So you may have spent more time, as an example, doing service work and you're working with a government agency and you're really doing research, right? Because you're gathering information, you, you're analyzing it, you know, and then you're disseminating it, but you're doing it through a consulting project or a grant project. You're just not doing it through a peer review process. So you want to talk about those to tell people, oh, I get that. I published a little bit, but I've done some other things that are related to that, not exactly the same versus just putting up, you got you know, seven publications and I have four and letting them say, oh, we're going to pick the guy with more publications. You want to be able to say, oh, I get that. I do that. I know how to do that. I just haven't done as much of that. So you're kind of telling your story, your version of the truth and showing them what I would call performance indicators, right? Because that's what they're trying to get to. What are the examples that indicate this person can do the job we need? And there are more than one way to describe those performance indicators than just a publication in a peer-reviewed thing, right? It could be a trade publication. It could be a blog post. It could be a lot of different ways to demonstrate that research and writing competency. So, Chris, are you are you suggesting that, I love the, the idea of telling your story, is it through the cover letter? Is it um, in an objective or a professional summary? Because obviously it's very easy to tell your story when you're speaking to someone in an interview, yeah. but how do you sell yourself and market yourself on paper? Yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. I, I would say it's both. So certainly that's what cover letters are designed for, right? To illuminate things, 
to expand and explain things, to to deal with any kind of gaps in employment. You want to be able to give your version of the truth, because if you don't, people will fill in blank, right? They don't know, right? And when they don't know, they're not going to call you up and ask you a question. They're going to put you aside, right? You know, and so you, you absolutely. But you can also do it in the resume, right? So for example, at the top in the objectives part or the summary of competencies or even in jobs, you know, in this example, you could talk about, you could even say those words, you know, seven publications, and then you could list these things like the government compendium that you wrote for somebody or a grant proposal or, you know, blogs and things like that. Uh, and you could even put a, put a summary there of saying multi-skilled writer and then list all those things. Telling that same story, because you're trying to be persuasive here, right? You see what I'm saying, right? You're saying, it's kind of like students on a test. If you don't think you know the answer, tell the professor everything you know. <laughs> now, that doesn't work every time, but it works a lot of times because if the, the professor says, okay, he did read, he did make some effort, he didn't have the answer exactly right, I'm going to give him partial credit versus no credit. So the point is that it's persuasive. It's a process. You want to tell your story in any venue that folks will listen. So it's both the resume, cover letter. Then, of course, once you get an interview, you have the latitude to talk about it a little bit more and be a little more persuasive about it as well. That's great. I, I love your advice of don't let them fill in the blanks because, yeah, they might just be like, next, move on. So that's great advice. Uh, and then the final point here is that sometimes when your balance of credentials are less favored in a particular environment, says you might be in the wrong environment. Right. So if you're at a community college, a research interest is not a priority, a liberal arts college, you know, or comprehensive, maybe less so than a research institution. So your background may be better suited for a different environment. And so like sometimes what the young people would say is, you know, get in where you fit in. Right. You know, you'll be celebrated here and you'll be OK here. Where would you rather play? <laughs> right. You know. And so, uh, you know, sometimes it's a matter of just just realizing that. But you don't always have that luxury because you could be place bound and you can't move. But sometimes, you know, you can make the decision to take your wares to a team that really appreciates your your kind of balanced perspective. Yeah, we talk a lot in the podcast and higher ed jobs as a, as a whole about fit. It's not just about that job title and the the salary, but the fit and the culture. And that's that's key. So thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Chris, for, for folks who are trying to use those performance indicators, could you do a breakdown of how they would actually do that in a practical sort of way? So there are three levels of qualification in my mind for any position is qualified, competitive, and fit. And so Kelly kind of spoke to that. So in the competitive part, it is the number and type of performance indicators that create rigor and strength to make an argument that I can do that. So you want to focus on any area that you want to prove or show to the reader, to the interviewer, that you're excellent. So that's why it's so important to kind of focus on the requirements in the job ad and then ensure that you completely tell your version of the truth. They want an excellent fundraiser. They want an excellent writer. They want whatever. You got to say to them, I can do that. Here are some examples or here are the examples. And the number and the type and that combination helps to create strength. And so I think that's part of it. But if you're shoring something up, again, that's when you kind of throw the suit, what is it, not throw the, what, what's, what's the saying where you got to throw it against the wall to see what sticks or you, or you kind of throw the sink in the atom or whatever, kind of like give them everything you got. Thanks so much, Chris. My pleasure as always. If you have a question for Chris, please feel free to email us at podcast at higheredjobs.com or tweet us at higheredjobs. We'd love to have your questions. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.